Of course, when you see me start a video like this, just know the video is going to be good. <laughs> anyway, I was just looking for a thumbnail. But uh, you can obviously tell I'm not at home, so kind thanks to US Gaming. I'm using their space to do this mouse review. And uh, go check out the video that I did about the budget mice because that is where I discovered this mouse. And let's just say this is one of those interesting Aula products in that for how affordable the mouse is priced. It's, it's ridiculous that this mouse packs this many features in such an affordable price. So in case you're wondering what mouse I'm talking about today, this is the Ola SC660 wireless gaming mouse. This is one of those interesting products in that this mouse is priced at 2700 Kenya shillings. This is equivalent to $21, $20, depending on the time you're watching this video. And uh, yeah, is this gaming mouse any good? Okay, inside the box, you will get the Aula SC660 mouse itself. There is also a USB cable for charging, and I forgot to shoot this, but beneath that black foam there, there is extra grips and skates. So, you know, it's always a plus when you see manufacturers including extra stuff in the box. Now, I will note that the mouse kind of feels slippery, and this is where the included grips and skates are great if you want to switch things up and tailor the mouse to fit your personal playstyle. Or additionally, if you just want a little bit more comfort during long gaming sessions. Now let's talk design. The Aula SC660 measures at 127 by 63 by 40 millimeters, making it comfortable for both claw and palm grip users. The mouse weighs in at 77 grams, at least that is what is written on the website, but I can confirm that the mouse is light enough for quick movement and the mouse still feels substantial in your hand. Additionally, the plastic build quality is solid with no creaks or flexing, making the mouse feel durable and reliable. And as I'm sure you have already noticed that this mouse is fully wireless, the mouse offers you the option to use it through Bluetooth or the included 2.4 GHz dongle. But for gaming at least, I'll recommend you stick to the 2.4 GHz mode as Bluetooth has been known to have some latency related issues. But if you still feel like you need to use the mouse wired, the included Type-C charging and data interface is great for faster charge times and Overall, just using the mouse while it's plugged in. And I know there is some concerns about latency because the mouse is wireless, but I will honestly tell you that I did not see a noticeable difference between using the mouse wired and using the mouse wireless. Performance-wise, the Aula SC660 comes equipped with the Pixar 3325 sensor, which offers a DPI of up to 10,000, and the DPI itself is customizable through the software or the dedicated DPI button at the bottom of the mouse, which is honestly strange. I don't know why the DPI button is at the bottom of the mouse. It doesn't make sense to me, so that's something to watch out for. I will note though that when compared to my Logitech G502, there is a noticeable difference in accuracy in that the Logitech G502 feels a bit sharper and more precise, especially when you're playing first-person shooter games. Now, this could just be my rusty FPS skills showing, but it is something that you might need to consider. This aside though, I would note that for any skilled player, the Aula SC660 might still deliver the precision needed for a high level gameplay. Now I know because this is a wireless mouse, there might be some battery life concerns, but I would say that this mouse is also excellent in this department as well. For context, I managed to get a full 4 days of heavy use without me feeling the need to recharge the mouse. And even after the 4 days of use, the mouse was at like 40% battery left, which again is ridiculous that this mouse is this affordable and can last this long. So in terms of the mouse software, in this case uh, we still go back to Aulastar.com and in my case I had already gone to products, gaming mouse and I found the actual mouse. Unfortunately this download button does nothing, so I wonder why it's not easy for them to just link the download to the Google Drive, so that's where you have to go find your drivers. If you go to driver, it's going to take you to this page. You click Aula International, which will open the Google Drive. So, Aula, link this, man. 
Oh, now once you find the softer, this is the Ola C, I mean SC 660, you just install it. In my case, I already have it installed and running. And here is the mouse itself. Now, uh, the mouse seems to have gone to sleep, which was something that kept happening to me. Don't know why it keeps going out. Uh, I mean, it keeps going to sleep, but I think because I'm also using another Aula mouse here, it's like the software has some bugs which you might notice as i'm recording this right so the first page here we have is where you can change your buttons in this case you can customize them the way you want and uh in my case i would have loved to change the dpi loop to maybe these ones but i use the forward and back this this is a forward and back i use them for some different things in games so again fix the positioning of the dpi button i don't like that it's at the bottom of the mouse i find that annoying by the way, something that I forgot to mention, as you can see, you can tell the battery indicator. The only other way to tell the battery or rather the level of your battery is through these LEDs you see on the inside there. You see those LEDs in there? Those nicely tucked LEDs in there. Let me move it as close as I can. So that's another way for you to tell the, uh, the level of your battery without using the software. But again, this is the mouse. Well, I would just recommend use the software because the software gives you more functionality. All right, so if you go to the other setting, we see the DPI here. For me, I already have it adjusted to uh, to my own DPI values, so I never use anything past 2000 anyway. So probably I would change this to like five stages. So I believe like the highest I would use is 2000. And the lights you see here or the colors you see here are the colors that will blink on the LED down here when you change your DPI. So in this case, um, it's right now it's at 800. If I change it, as you can see, it blinks. Um, did it blink blue? I feel like it did not blink blue, right? Right, I think it's still blinking the colors that were on my system at home. So these are the kinds of bugs that I'm saying. The software is a bit buggy. In, in my own opinion, I feel like the software is a bit buggy. So let me adjust the colors and let's try that again. Let's go to blue. So I can go to like cyan or something. I think this one can remain yellow. All right, let's see if now it updates. So right now it's at uh, 600. Did it blink green? Yes. Blue, so that blue is a bit odd. Maybe color temperature. So I think maybe it's a color temperature thing on the camera. So that's why it doesn't seem like it's updating. But uh, let's leave it at 800. So that's how you change and manipulate your DPI. The next setting we have here is uh, the polling rate. By the way, I forgot to mention that uh, this mouse comes with a default polling rate of 500 hertz. So you need to use the software to change it to a thousand, which will make the mouse more snappy when you're playing games. But uh, also I will mention that there's no noticeable battery life impact when you change from like 500 to a thousand. So yes. The other thing in the software is the LED. So right now the configuration is set to tail. So the light is chasing, you can change the speed, which by the way, it's like you have to tap the mouse for it to update, which weird. There should be like an apply button somewhere here. So that's not that convenient. Um, let's just take it up back to three and let's check others. We have colorful, steady, uh, I don't know. I'm not a fan of that one. We have wave. So right now it updates without me touching the mouse. We have wave. We have off. Touch the mouse again. So that's the LED with off. We have neon. So uh yeah, I don't know. We have steady, steady is just a steady color. I think you can change it to whichever color you want. So maybe leave it to like I don't know. I like I like this. I like this red that almost looks blue. I think you guys know my theme color already. So yeah. Uh, breathing, straightforward, it's just breathing. Streaming, I don't know what streaming is, man. I think it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me leave it to steady. I think I prefer steady. And uh, let's leave it there. The other option on the software here is the macro lists. Again, I'm not really a fan of macros in this 
or rather just setting up macros i prefer like a dedicated stream deck for this so yeah maybe go do your own stuff there but uh the software is nice and um i would say it's a bit buggy sometimes the fact that i have to touch the mouse to update i feel like they should have an apply button also i think another caveat i have with the software is um, there's no dedicated profile so you could there's a profile yes to store like your button configurations your led and stuff but there's no game specific profile so if you've used logitech g hub you know that the g hub and Razer synapse software have game dedicated profiles in that like when you launch into like apex in my in in my case um the mouse or rather the software will know that apex you love playing apex at a certain dpi you've already bound some keys to do some certain things in apex and those settings will be different in whatever game maybe i play in ozone i play with a dpi of 1200 so i have certain specific specific settings maybe my side buttons here you know they do things like maybe throw grenades so that is something that um logitech jihab and the synapse allows you to do so i'll uh, refine your software make it a little bit more functional i mean more functional <laughs> functional and uh, i feel like this software would be great if it had that addition but as it is it's functional and you know it just works so yeah this is the aula sc 660 in terms of its software so is the aula sc 660 gaming mouse worth adding to your setup definitely with its customizable options solid build and impressive battery life it's a fantastic choice for gamers on a budget the sensor might not match up to the high-end models like the logitech g502 and the software could use some improvements but overall it's a reliable and versatile gaming mouse that will suit most gamers just fine so we've come to the end of the video hopefully you guys enjoyed that review it's definitely an interesting product and for the price it's ridiculous that this is a wireless mouse that is even under 3000 Kenyan shillings. So this is quite a bargain. And uh, of course you can get even more of a bargain if you use the code or if you use my discount code, which is bloody, not bloody, actor actually, not bloody. My discount code is actor. Remember my discount code, by the way, guys, even not only on ES Gaming, even on my other affiliates, only works if you check out through the website so if you want to purchase this ola sc660 be sure to go to esgaming.co.ke additionally if you want to visit their offices they're located at old mutual building room 405 on the fourth floor of the building now tell me what you guys think about this mouse and i'll be sure to reply to you and uh, of course join my channel if you're interested in supporting me you can always say thanks you can always donate you can do whatever you want to do to support me it's honestly up to you again thanks to es gaming for making this video possible and for providing this uh, mouse and the space for me to film this and again i'll see you guys in the next one